Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this one. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about two overvalued stocks in my portfolio that I own. Gonna go through what those stocks are, and then I'm gonna talk about why I think they're overvalued, but why they are still in my portfolio and why I'm not selling them. So both these positions that I'm gonna to talk today are up a lot in my portfolio, um, both in this account and in other accounts. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is Microsoft. So Microsoft, just looking at it in my portfolio here, is up almost 45%, um, up 3,000 US dollars, give or take. Looking at the ride this stock's taken over the last five years here, you can see it went all the way up to 330 throughout the pandemic and, and coming out of it, and then had a big dip with the rest of tech all the way down to 220. I think I actually added a couple shares in the 220, so got lucky on those one or two I bought down there. Since then, the stock has just gone on an absolute rip, up about 50%, actually over 50%, probably closer to 60% since hitting those bottom numbers. But my opinion is that at these valuations, just moving over to Google Finance here, um, that the stock has probably run too much in the short term. Um, just trying to get a better view here. Um, probably not going to get it uh, in terms of the the rise from the exact bottom. You can see this company right now is valued at 2.6, over 2.6 trillion dollars, um, trading at a trailing PE, high 30s, probably a current uh, PE, more mid to low 30s, but with five to six percent interest rates, trading at a mid to low 30 price to earnings, which is essentially a free cash flow yield of two to three percent, is extremely expensive for the stock market. So we're gonna look at some of their information. We're gonna look at if um, we, you guys feel like they deserve this kind of valuation, where I think fair value today would be, and then ultimately why I am not selling the stock. So here's just their last quarter earnings that they published. They did over $50 billion in revenue. They have amazing gross margin, 70% give or take. Um, operating um, margin at 42% and they made about 18 billion in net income. Let's just round up, let's just say on an annualized basis, they do $80 billion of net income based off of that last quarter. That would still be about a 32 to 33 PE, assuming um, that was annualized. Now, they obviously have a lot of drivers that have catapulted the stock over 50% here. Um, mainly with artificial intelligence looping in AI into um, lots of their uh, Office 365 suite. In addition to that, it looks like their Activision Blizzard deal is going to uh, close. In the grand scheme of the company, that's pretty minor. They make more money on in one year than that entire um, Activision Blizzard deal is worth. But I think it's a nice plus that that can help accelerate their gaming unit, may have some... Um, metaverse application, VR application one day um, for them to take place uh, in, in, in that field down the future. But I like how Activision Blizzard is profitable from day one for Microsoft if they're able to close that deal um, any day now, which it looks like they will. But overall here, still trading in the 30s as a company. As we look at Wall Street analysts, some companies or some analysts rather have them making under $10 a share this year, which would put <laughs> their price to earnings at about 36 times. Uh, for next year, it's 11. So future earnings probably closer to 32, 33 times. Okay. So nonetheless, trading low to mid 30s, just like I suspected, even on, on the outlook, it's low, uh, low 30s. So very expensive price to earnings. You get a tiny dividend here, 0.77%. They increase it every year, but it's such a small base that it doesn't really matter too much. So I understand why it's, it's getting bid up, but in my opinion, in this environment, um, I think a company should be trading current year earnings around 30 times. So probably this stock trading closer to 300 bucks is what I would feel like is a fair price on this stock. Um, for today uh, that I would say, you know, I, I could maybe add a couple shares here or there. I feel like I'm getting a fair value. So I think it's probably run about 20% too high, um, just given the quick checks that I've done. Um, and, and in my opinion, and lots of that 20% premium is just future um, 
buffer for the potential of AI and, and revenue acceleration that that may have on their office suite. But I think 20% um, trade up on a $2.6 trillion company is way too much. 20% on uh, $2.6 trillion, it's like $500 billion. So I get it in the long term, maybe worth that. Not sure I'm willing to pay an extra $500 billion of market cap for that today. So those are my thoughts on what it should be valued at in terms of why I'm still holding this stock. So Microsoft is one of the best businesses in the world, software business. I'm a long-term investor, at least I try to be on lots of my core positions. So this is a stock that I do have a pretty good position in across my portfolios. I think I started buying this stock closer to $100 a share um, at first. So in addition to you know tax implications of selling, I'm just a big believer of when you have a great company, even if it go, gets 10, 20, 30% overvalued, if you already have a full position in it, um, you can just take the dividends, reinvest them or invest them in different businesses if you think the company is really overvalued. And over the long term, even though they may go down 10% next week, which wouldn't surprise me on a company like this, but instead of trading in and out over the long term to make sure you don't miss that long-term upside and, and um, long-term appreciation of the of the value of the company. Um, just make sure uh, that I'm in it and I want to be invested in Microsoft over the long term. I do feel like even at 35 times earnings instead of 30 times earnings, 10 years from now, it won't matter. Um, just like how even if I go back five years here, back in 2018 when it was at $112, Imagine if someone thought it was worth $100, so they sold their position because it was $12 higher than they thought, and they missed the 300% run-up. So that's kind of my thoughts on, on Microsoft as a business. Want to be invested in it, but definitely not buying any net new shares at these levels, as I think it's probably run up a bit too high. Okay, the second stock in my portfolio that I'm going to pivot to that I think is overvalued is McDonald's. So McDonald's here is at $294 a share. You can see I'm up about 28% on this one. Looking at the past five years, it's just had a really nice trajectory uh, up into the right with the exception of the COVID blip in March of 2020. Um, it was a great opportunity to buy more shares there. My average price in this account is pretty high, about 230 bucks. I actually hold it in a few other accounts. Um, for, for lower, I've been a McDonald's shareholder for a while. Um, this is overall a tremendous business. As we just think about McDonald's, they're one of the biggest real estate and international real estate investors in the world. They have a very capital light model on lots of their business, just collecting rent and royalty fees or, or licensing fees from lots of their franchisees. And they have the most productive quick service business uh, restaurant brand and, and business in the world does way more in per store revenues than any other fast food chain. So super profitable, super highly coveted. Um, and they have a great, great business model. That's just creating lots of free cash flow. With that being said, the company is trading at about $300 here. It's just exploded. You can see here from even going before, um, COVID it, it ran up really quickly from 150 to 200. Um, and that looked really expensive. And now we're all the way up 50% higher at 300. I remember um, a few years ago uh, listening to someone on CNBC make a bull case on how one day in the medium term, McDonald's may be able to hit $10 of earnings per share. I think that's when the stock was trading um, kind of in that 150 to 200 range. Um, and they thought it could go to, to 250 off of that. Now, sitting here today looking at um, McDonald's EPS estimate, it looks like they're going to do $11 this year and do $12 next year. So even in excess of what that bullish prediction was back five years ago. With that being said, even at $11 a share on $300, trading like 27 times current earnings, 25 times the high estimate earnings for 2024. So great business model, but at the end of the day, super built out already. They have like 40,000 locations. I don't think they're going to have tons of new openings a year. They've already 
refranchise lots of the business so that they don't have opportunities and expanding margins on, on that front. And they own a lot of real estate. So lots of their business is very developed at this point. So you're really buying um, maybe a, a more stable company here for a multiple of 27 times, which I love the safety of McDonald's. I think it'll do great in any environment. Um, but I think 27 times is, is probably on the high side. I'd feel better at this one in a low 20s multiple. Um, they do hold a lot of debt as well, given their real estate exposure, which can pose a risk in a high interest rate environment. Um, so if it was at 22 times, we'd be talking about a stock that is about $230, $240 a share. I think that's probably more reasonable. So I'm not touching McDonald's up here at 294. Just looking at their business a bit more, um, they actually had a decrease of revenues that you can, oh, click the button, that you can see here went from about 10 billion in revenue to 8.8 .8 billion in uh, revenue from company operated stores. But you can see that billion dollars really just flew from company operated to franchise restaurants. So that means they probably sold more of their locations, trying to really feed the franchise asset light business model, um, which they've been doing pretty successfully over the last number of years. Overall revenues were about flat um, for the total company at $23 billion. But you'll see as we go down, they had some pretty big net income hits, uh, some impacts here, just some corporate expenses, some higher depreciation and amortization fees, higher other fees. So. Um, lots of lots of stuff going on there that is more semantics than anything. But at the end of the day, it, it delivered um, eight dollars and fifty cents of EPS last year, which was down from ten dollars the year prior. So this company's EPS isn't exactly just on a non-adjusted basis growing year over year. They're a bit all over the place. What I did like to see is them use some of their free cash flow to buy back some shares. So looks like they went from. Um, 750 million shares of 740 million shares. So as a long-term investor, I like when um, companies do that, assuming their balance sheet um, or their debt position is, is reasonable and doesn't need to be paid off. So I like owning 1% more of McDonald's for, for doing nothing, essentially. Going into um, some more just revenue splits of their business, you can kind of see how developed their business is by looking at the last three years of um, revenue performance. It's very, very stable. You can see here, the US is always about 40% of their revenue, international operated markets. So these are um, markets that they actually have relationships with the franchisees themselves. That's about 50% of the revenue. So between um, licensed relationships directly with franchisees, and the U.S. Uh, franchises they own and the franchisees they have, that's about 90% of the business. So that's pretty much the business. 10% of the business is international development licenses that they will like license, license an entire market to a company to operate McDonald's in that market. And then they'll get a top line royalty, essentially, which is smaller than what their traditional licensing fees would be, because that other company will be managing the entire operations of the country, um, dealing with the franchisees responsible for signing up new franchisees, things like that. Um, so very, very asset light on that 10%, but a bit um, less meat on the bone, for lack of a better term, for the McDonald's Corporation. Going to some more data here, you can kind of see their evolution of, of growing um, their franchise margins for the most part. So while their com company operated margins are delivering the same amount uh, to the bottom line, like a billion to two billion. You see their franchise margins go from eight billion to almost 12 billion just over the last couple of years. So that's really where they're focusing on growing the company. Um, and then lastly here, you just see uh, some comments that, that they've made uh, overall about their digital sales being a big priority. So I think that uh, McDonald's is definitely the standard, the golden standard for, <laughs> no pun intended, for quick service restaurants. I think they're the best one. I think they stand for value. They have great brand equity. I think they'll do well no matter what the economy does. And I love their global exposure as well. Um, love their business model, how they own the real estates, um, how they're very asset light and, and they're really doubling down on that. 
um, product innovation, partnerships with celebrities, things like that to keep the brand fresh and, and new people coming in the door, um, how they're the most productive quick service restaurant. So least likely to have locations shut down on them because of lack of profitability or something like that. Um, so overall, it's so many things I love about this company. I think it's a great um, business to own long term. And that's why I'm holding it, despite the fact that I think the stock has been bid up, perhaps um, similar to Microsoft, about 20% too high or so. So this is one that I'm not buying any more shares of at these valuations. I'm just taking the dividend, which I believe is a couple percent, yeah, 2% there, and reinvesting it in other opportunities that I see in my portfolio. If you watch more of my videos, you'll see what kind of st what stocks I'm currently buying and, and interested in um, adding. But this is a great company. They have a dividend increase rate of over 50 years in a row increasing the dividend. Some of their recent dividend increases have been 10% plus. So really uh, growing that yield on cost um, for investors who have gotten in over the last number of years. And I think their executional excellence paired with just how strong their business is, how strong their brand is, and, and the growth that they've um, seen over the medium to long term is really the driving force behind why this company's at the valuation it is at. I'm just not willing to buy it at this valuation. So that's the reason that even though I feel like this company's overvalued, I'm not going to be selling it for my portfolio, but I'm definitely not going to be adding to it from here. So I hope you guys like this video, some of the context behind why I own Microsoft, why I own McDonald's, um, my thoughts on both of these stocks being slightly overvalued by 20% give or take, but why that's not tempting at all to dump my shares at these valuations. I think both these stocks five years from now will be much higher. Um, not sure if they'll be higher next year, um, but I think five years from now, these stocks will be higher. Um, and if interest rates um, go down, naturally that should help um, the valuation of especially Microsoft, but maybe maybe even McDonald's as well. So looking forward to seeing how the market develops, how their stock prices develop. But in the meantime, going to be holding these, going to be investing in some other opportunities that I see across my portfolio. If you like this type of content, be sure to like this video. It really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, please let me know in the comments. We don't get a lot of people making it to the end, so I really appreciate it. We'll love to hear from you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.